Slave code, the secrets hidden in the English language. Can you see with the eyes you have? The mind is useless, if the eyes are blind. Are you missing anything regarding the words you use on a regular basis? Let's take a look. Work week equals work week. Weekend equals weekend. So you arrive weekend to your weekend from your work week, because the work made you weak. They are called weekdays, because they put you into a weekdays. A break is called a break, during your slave filled day, because most slaves would break without the break. Our slave masters know this, and provide the break, because it helps produce more milk from the human cattle. The original break of course given to a slave came, when they passed out from complete exhaustion or actually died. The slave owner would say he's broke, broken or taking a permanent break. How do you pronounce war? Go ahead, right now, pronounce it. That's right, it's pronounced war and war with a K on the end of it is work. Did you know K is the Egyptian letter for death, the 11? So work actually means war plus death. If you walk A for a living, you know how this feels. The use of a hypno-based language, designed by our humans farmers, helps increase control over the slave class by planting the fertile subconscious with seeds of perpetual servitude. Control is control, the con job designed for the trolls. They send us to their schools, and call them schools, because just like school if fish, we think and react as one group, from the doctrine of sameness implanted into us. We are trained as other animals are trained, yet a train is literally boxcar after boxcar following the one in front of it, without question or resistance. The word graduation means gradual indoctrination. You get up to the morning, but morning is a form of sorrow or grieving. You say hello as you arrive, but why is our greeting hello? Why is hell a part of our greeting? Why do other words referring to hot places surround us like hotmail hotmail, or firefox? Who is the historical hotmail? AKA the devil which is the word live spelled backwards, evil being the word live spelled backwards, you get up in the morning, morning, to earn a living, but earn is also earn, a vessel to keep the cremated ashes of your body. Morning, morning, is another word synonymous with death. You wake from your slum bear, from your slum, because the system never gives you enough to get ahead in life. With coffee, the same prefix used in the word coffin, Egyptian in origin, originally spelled kafi or kafin, ka means the spirit after death. You go to your job, but job in the Bible, is a man who's heavily tormented by God. Pronounced Jube, job in the Bible has his wealth, health and children stolen from him by Satan, but Satan was given permission by God to do so. Why is our work, our job, literally named after a man, job, who has his health, children and wealth taken away? Why is God and Satan working together on job in the Bible, to make his life more miserable? Why is a meeting place of religion called a parish, pronounced exactly the same as parish, a word meaning to die? The word church comes from the word kirk in Scottish. Kirk comes from the Roman word circ and circ comes from the Greek mother circ pronounced circe, a sorceress who would tempt men into her house, turn them into pigs and eat them. Go ahead, look it up yourself, because that's the best kind of research. For our slavery we are given $20 bills, $50 bills, $100 bills etc, but aren't bills something you pay, something you owe? At a restaurant, if you're given a bill for $50, don't you owe $50? And there lies the secret in plain sight, our payments are called bills by our human farmers, because we owe it all back to them, first in taxes, and then in useless meaningless purchases, as we waste our money trying to rapidly decorate our jail cell down on the human farm. We spend our bills on soulless purchases from large corporations, that our social engineers own. They laugh at how inept we are. This is why most people have no money, because we are not being paid to be slaves, we are being given bills, that we need to pay. We are paying to be slaves. That's what debt is, the act of getting paid in bills, and having less than nothing as each week, week, goes by, because you owe everything in involuntary and voluntary purchases. The money is charged to leave the slave's hand, as soon as they touch it. The system is designed to make the money flow through our hands like water, and by calling the fake paper money bills, a word that means we owe it to others, ends with us being more likely to simply give that money away, when we need it to stop being slaves. You obey the watch to arrive on time, because the watch is designed to be the modern watcher or slave driver. What drives the slaves to work, when you can't have that many people whipping each slave across the world? That's when the watch comes into the picture and you can watch yourself, watch your watch, the next time you go to work. The watch owns you, rushes you and you obey it like it has a gun to your head. The watch watches you, and signifies the wrist chain worn by someone who isn't in control of their time. You keep looking at your watch as you race to work, the new watcher is in complete control of the slave, something the slave pays for and wears themselves. The more expensive the watch, the more the slave believes they are free. The necktie was originally designed to signify the dog collar or neck chain, meaning being owned and controlled by someone else. You need to have a collar shirt on to wear the necktie around your throat. 
The necktie means you're tied and controlled by another, a slave to the script. The slave can only pick the color and quality of their tie, but can never choose to be free of the tie around their neck. Most people at work have a title. Title is really title, the symbolism of how your title name tells others who you are tied to. Your title signifies who controls the tie, dog collar, around your neck, around the collar shirt, like a dog on a leash. People often wear a uniform. Uniform is derived from the word uni, meaning one and form, meaning a way to be. Uniform means you're programming and conditioned to act like everyone else wearing the same uniform, equaling no independence and no free will. You were schooled like fish to move as one and trained to follow like a train. Your morality and ethics are spoken for. Your time is spoken for. Your thoughts are spoken for. Inject that other slave with a toxic vaccine. Serve that other slave some poisonous coffee at the coffee shop. Go kill slaves in other countries, inside fake wars, where slave master controls both sides. Welcome to the slave life. A uniform means the outsourcing of free will and being reflexively obedient to slave master. Obey, comply, consume, sedate, repeat. To follow, you must first follow, to crawl on your knees the rest of the way. The suit and tie is our most common uniform, signifying our willingness to outsource our morality and ethics to another. Your behavior dictated by forces outside of yourself, the removal of free will. You arrive on time. The word time is timey or timey, timey to the chains, so the work can begin. Put the tie around my neck, so I can obey and comply to the slave master. The cufflinks represent the handcuffs, or links of the traditional slave base chain around the wrist, yet if they are made from gold, we think we are free. We lie to ourselves because lying is a word that means we lie down, submitting to our slavery, instead of standing up to the slave master. Submit is made up of the word sub, meaning below and mit, meaning the hand or glove. As we submit, we agree to be under someone else's hand or control. We've exchanged our chains of cast iron for chains of gold. The person in charge means the person who conducts the electricity, as charge is an electrical or energy term. This describes the energy thrown into us from slave master, making us perform and dance with their electricity, as we've had our own personal electrical charge of free will surgically removed by master's indoctrination systems and slates of mind. The person in charge controls our very electrical life force because we've submitted to their authority. Authority is derived from the word author, the person who writes. Someone wrote down that we are less and we complied because word magic is powerful, full of power. The word is more powerful than the sword, but did you notice sword is word with an S on the front of it? How much are you not seeing with the eyes you have? Did you know S is a hieroglyph that represents a person versed in knowledge and word magic? Words are indeed swords, if wielded by someone with knowledge of the human mind and spells. That's why writing is called spelling, and fancy writing is called cursive, to cast a spell or curse. S words are used against you every day by the what the ancient world called the serpents, the S, the serpents, and that is why you call a high ranking man in our society today sir, as you, a slave, passes by. This is also why we are still under servitude. During conventional slavery, the slave owner had to incur all costs including housing, healthcare, food, cleaning of the slave quarters, clothing, birthing of the child slaves, raising the child slaves, transportation of the slaves back and forth from work, celebrations, clean up after a natural disaster, slave entertainment, schooling of the new slave children, to be good slaves etc etc. A slave owner's profit was always revenue minus expenses, no different than any business. The big trick was to tell the slaves that they were free, let them pay all those expenses, allow them to come back to the plantations, and then to tax them, in order to actually make more profit compared to the original slavery concept, with little to no chance of rebellion or resistance. All taxation is meant to increase a slave's dependence on their slavery, as the people taking the tax away from the slaves print the money themselves, and therefore don't have any use for it. Taxation is about keeping the slave down. That's it. Taxation has one purpose, and one purpose only. To make the slave dependent on coming back to the modern plantations of slavery, day in and day out. If the slave starts to save their money, give them a TV full of negative role modeling, and watch the slave magically go into debt. If the slave still has money, organize a stock market crash, or increase the taxes, theft. The people who print the money have no use for extra fake paper money, which they can print at any time, and in any quantity they desire. The entire drive of the tax system is to make sure the slave has no extra money, as to provide them with enough freedom to figure any of this out. Slavery wasn't abolished, the plantation was simply expanded, and they mock us inside the language. Everyone was tricked into becoming a slave, while believing they're free. The language is loaded with many disempowering subconscious cues, because our human farmers have been at this game much longer than they'll allow us to know. Do you know what's going on? Are you sure? 
Link in description.